Praise the Lord, beloved and the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Wanted to talk to you today. Uh, well, I'm going to be preaching to the choir here, but this is really a message that somebody come along this video. Hopefully, if you are a believer, this will help you to understand that we have been inundated with false gospel messages from these Babylonian Christian churches for a millennia, more than a millennia. And every time I hear somebody deliver this message, I want to throw something at the TV. Because it's a lie. And, and not only are we being inundated with lies, but the world is being inundated with these lies. And it is blocking people from being able to enter into the kingdom. Because they keep teaching that you have to repent of your sin to be saved. And it is a lie. The other thing that they also uh, say is that you have to be sorry for your sin to be saved. And that's a lie. I want you to think about something for a minute. Let's just take this scenario. Let's say a man just got through having sex with a woman last night. Gorgeous, beautiful woman. And you come along and preach the gospel message to him that he need to be sorry for his sin. What do you think one of the first things going to pop in his mind? What happened last night? And he going to look at you in his heart, even if he don't say it out loud, like, you crazy. I ain't sorry for that. Because, see, they're delivering a false message. The Bible don't say you got to be sorry for your sin. The Bible says you have to recognize you a sinner. Jesus said, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. It's somebody who understands, yeah, I'm broken. Yeah, I'm a sinner. Yeah, I do. I've done evil things. I've done wrong. I basically you would just say I am wrong. They have to recognize that they're a sinner and that they need a savior. And you're presenting to them the gospel message that Jesus is the savior. That he loves them. That the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. If we waited for people to be sorry for their sin, nobody could get saved. You'd have a handful people that beat themselves up for stuff all the time once I got saved well I was a child when I got saved but as I got older one of the biggest struggles I ever had was forgiving myself for the wrong I had done in my life then some of y'all still wrestling with that you don't have a problem that Jesus has forgiven you you got a problem forgiving yourself Nobody is saying, see, we spend the rest of our lives, once we get saved, <laughs> repenting. This is what drives me bananas with them, with this false message. Because it prevents people from entering into the kingdom, from receiving Christ. It's a false message. I just heard it this morning from a reputable ministry. But they had some guest on there, and the first thing he parrots out of his mouth is you have to be sorry for your sin. It's a lie. And instead of them, first of all, not posting that video. But second, they should have rebuked that dude. What are you talking about? You don't have to be sorry for your sin. You don't have to repent for your sin. You have to repent from your unbelief. You go from being faithless to believing. We are justified by faith. So if we're justified by faith, we are condemned by what? Sin? No! unbelief you are condemned for unbelief and the world can't enter in because of their unbelief because once you believe you turn to Christ when you turn to Christ you begin to emulate Christ when you begin to emulate Christ you begin to cast away sin you learn what things, because a lot of things people don't even know are sin, y'all. Remember, now we got generations that have been convinced that certain lifestyles are okay. They have been inundated with this. They have been brainwashed with this through television, the biggest witchcraft box on the planet. Presenting the image of the beast constantly, 24-7, 365. 
no matter what holiday is going on. And if it's Sunday, they're even more evil. So they've been constantly bombarded with all this demonic trash. And then they come into the knowledge of the truth, which is King Jesus. And they begin to see the light. And as they begin to see the light, they sure don't need to get a false message that you have to repent of your sin. No, you need to get saved. Repent of your unbelief. And then once you get saved, the Holy Spirit convicts and convinces of sin. There will be things that the Lord begins to show them they didn't even know what sin is sin. I keep trying to point out that take for example in the scripture Judas, the one that was lost, that the Bible calls the son of perdition. He did what he was supposed to do according to the old covenant. He recognized that he had done evil. He had done wrong. Remember he went back to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And he said. I have betrayed the innocent blood. He confessed his sin. To the religious leaders. There were priests there. When he confessed his sin. And you know what those devils told him. (laughs) They said. What, what is that to us, Judas? See thou to that. Remember, they the ones paid him anyway. The price of the slave, 30 pieces of silver. He took and he gave it back. He said, I betrayed the innocent blood. And then he went out and did exactly what the old covenant said. A life for a life. He hung himself. And yet Judas is called the son of perdition. He was lost. Repenting of your sin. Being sorry for your sin. And even committing of attrition punishment of the flesh does not save you Judas is proof of that you must repent of your unbelief that is why when uh, Paul and who was the other one oh I always forget that one Uh, I can't pause this this new audio won't let me pause it Uh, when they said to the jailer And he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Emphasis on do, y'all. This is not an accident. This is recorded in the scripture. He said, what must I do? They didn't say repent of your sins and have godly sorrow and commit acts of attrition. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy whole house. Do you ever wonder why it says in thy whole house? Because when you get born again, when a person gets born again, salvation comes back to that home. And the first thing that person has to do when they come in, I don't care if that was a Muslim house, a Catholic house, a Hindu house, a a house of Judaism, or a house of ill repute. When you come through the door and you declare, I've been born again. I place my faith in Jesus for my salvation. I'm saved. That's what Jesus said. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword and to set a man at variance with the members of his own household, a father against the son and a mother against the daughter. Why is he saying that? He said, but he's the prince of peace. The Bible's contradicting itself. No, it's not. The Bible defines itself. He's letting people know when you bring salvation back to the home, it's upsetting the devil's apple cart. It's overturning it. And now those people are confronted with the truth. Salvation has come to their home. Now, it's up to them to receive it. And thankfully, many do. Some of y'all can testify to that. I, re- I remember, I know a story where a man got saved. And he came home and declared it. <laughs> he declared it to his wife. And the wife got jealous. What you mean you love Jesus now? Got upset. Acted a fool. All hell broke loose for about a month. And then after his witness and her noticing his change and him asking her to come to church, her first several refusals. And then finally she agrees and goes to church and hears the gospel and gets born again. And there's, gosh, we don't even know how many millions of stories like that out there that testify to that. Beloved, I get so angry 
in defense of the gospel because people are not preaching the truth and they are deceiving people and they leading people down the wrong path. They leading people in the wrong direction with a false message and it is Romanism. It is antithetical to the scripture. A person never has to rip Repent of their sin to be saved. They have to repent of their unbelief. And it is repenting of their unbelief. Changing their mind and going from being faithless to believing. That saves them. Faithless from believing in Christ to believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he paid for all their sin on Calvary. And once they can see the light of Christ and receive the true gospel, they are born again. And now the Lord begins to work on them daily. Moment by moment, repenting, changing their mind, casting those things away that are not like Christ. And the Holy Spirit begins to renew your mind both through his witness and the power of the word of the living God which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart the very things you and I would never see that that person would need to come to repentance of the Lord will begin to deal with them about I trust him to do his job. He said he would. And he does. That's the true gospel message. That's the truth. It ain't popular. But it's the truth. Be blessed beloved of the most high God. In the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Yeah.